What's up Nightwalkers? Today I've got the PVS21. This device doesn't belong to me, this is TNVC's. And the reason I'm making this video is that 21's come up for sale in the civilian market and then there's just not a lot of information about these things out there. So I wanted to make this video so if somebody is in the market and they see one of these things for sale, uh, they can at least have a good idea of what they're getting themselves into before they make the decision to purchase one of these things. The PVS21 also goes by LPNVG, which stands for Low Profile Night Vision Goggle. And so what makes it low profile is basically the distance of it, you know, the fore and aft uh, distance. So, you know, the back of the device to the front. So as a comparison, here's a uh, DTNVS. And as you can see, the DTNVS um, is a bit longer in terms of the dimensions of it. And so from this other profile here, uh, you can basically see how, how it compares. And so most people watching the video know the way this whole process works, but I'm going to run through it anyways. And so the way night vision works in a traditional system like this is uh, here's your objective lens. The light travels into it, goes into the image intensifier. It does its magic and then spits out the image through the ocular lens to your eye. And so the way the 21 works is here's your objective lens. However, when the, when the light comes in, it travels in a different direction. And then the actual tube, once it does its magic, it actually spits it out here into what's called a beam combiner. And so what makes this so unique about the 21, this is really the key thing that separates the 21, you know, from a traditional night vision device, is with the traditional device, um, a lot of people don't know this actually that, that haven't used night vision. And I've actually talked to some people who have used night vision who don't even understand how this works. But basically, you know, when this is turned on and then the, the tube is getting power and it's doing its thing and spitting out the image, uh, you know, you do get the, the impression that you're looking straight through the tube. Uh, however, you're not. So when you turn this off, when you're, when you're looking through it, you can't see anything because the, the image intensifier basically is restricting your ability to look through it. And so with the 21, uh, because it's using these beam combiners, you know, if you have the device turned off, just like you can see here, as you can actually look straight through this thing. And, and so what the benefit to that is that you don't have to stow the goggle to use your eyeballs uh, or articulate them up. Whereas with something like this, you know, if you don't have it turned on, uh, you have to articulate these out of the way or you have to stow the goggle up on your helmet to use your eyeballs. The 21 wasn't designed just to be low profile. And so because they uh, use this beam combiner system, which is actually a projected image from the tube, uh, you have these, these plates on the sides, on the left and right monoculars. Uh, these plates are actually interfaces to interface a system that's called the EHUD, the Enhanced Heads Up Display. And obviously this is a, a military type of a configuration. Uh, but what the EHUD allows you to do uh, with the 21, if you have all the right supporting accessories, is basically bring in a video or data to be displayed through the beam combiner. So that could be stuff like GPS coordinates, maps, building schematics, whatever the case may be. Here's the battery compartment. It holds one AA battery. This is the power knob. One click is on, and now it does have onboard IR. Uh, these are your IR illuminators uh, right here, one on each side. And so you pull it out, turn it one time is low, one more time is IR high, and then you just reverse order to go back. Now, these right here are lens refocusing accessories. And so what's, what's pretty cool with these things is, you know, typically when you're using night vision, you're gonna have your objective lens focused at infinity distance, you know? So, so basically everything like 30 yards and out is gonna be in focus. Anything up close is gonna be blurry. And so for example, uh, from a standpoint, if you're trying to get to a door um, I don't know, let's say from a military standpoint, you're gonna place a charge or whatever you're gonna do, uh, by using this refocus accessory and flipping it down, uh, you'll get near focus instantaneously, and then once you're done doing whatever you do, you just flip it up and then you're back to infinity focus. You adjust your IPD or inner pupillary distance spacing by articulating these, uh, these monoculars like that to get the, the beam combiners where they're supposed to be for your eyes. Now the tilt adjustments are actually done uh, through the goggle itself, and so you, you basically rotate it, and you can see how it's adjusting the tilt on the dovetail shoe. So that's how your tilt's done. The 21 requires its own specific mount, which would be the Wilcox G21M mic. Now this isn't the exact G21M, however, it's a Wilcox mount, pretty much looks and functions the same way. So uh, this mount has a breakaway feature in it, which you can enable or disable, just like you can with the 24. Your vertical adjustment's done here with this knob, and then here's your two different stow positions. Uh, they can't be used at the same time. You have to use them independently. So here's low stow, puts the goggle up like this. And then your high stow position is done with this knob right here. And then it flips the goggle all the way up in that type of manner. And then your fore and aft adjustments is done by throwing this lever right here and then sliding the dovetail um, back and forth. 
And then like I showed you earlier, the way that you do your uh, tilt adjustments is on the goggle itself with this knob. Let me show you how it looks on the, on the helmet. So you gotta be careful, here's your release button. It's kind of close to the, uh, to the high stow knob. So there's your low stow position. And like I said, you can't use these together. So for example, with the, with the high stow button, it won't lock out. And then here's your high stow position, which does this type of thing, same thing. So you can't use, you can't use them together. Now, one thing that's uh, interesting with this goggle is uh, just because of how you have to move it up and down uh, for the high stow position, uh, almost always you're gonna get fingerprints on the beam combiners, either on the back or on the front, um, or you're gonna get fingerprints on the objective lens. Something with the 21 that's kind of weird is uh, the helmet selection and the mounts and just the way it, it, it interfaces with your helmet. Uh, it can be kind of an issue sometimes. So for example, on this Opscore helmet, uh, the angle of this mount with the goggle, I don't have enough tilt adjustment to bring this down to how I need to look at it the best um, on this helmet. However, I did try it on an ACH profile helmet and then I, I, the angle did seem better. However, I still felt like I needed more um, tilt to bring it down in this position. Uh, then the other problem that you run into is, you know, depending on your, your particular helmet and everything. So for example, you know, um, I find that I have to have this right up on my eyes because these beam combiners are pretty small compared to a typical uh, night vision device. And so if you, have it up in, if you have it up close to your eyes, let's say, and then you need to get this thing higher, well, if the goggles, you know, right in this position, uh, you're not gonna be able to adjust it, uh, you know, higher at all because now it's making contact uh, with your helmet. So that's, that's one thing with the 21 that I found to be, you know, kind of wonky is that, you know, may not, you may not be able to get this thing to line up the best for your eyes, depending on your particular helmet, and then potentially your, you know, your head position uh, and everything else in terms of how close you need to get this to your to your face. Here's a good example of the fingerprint issue. So just in the in the time I've been manipulating this device up and down on that mount to show you the uh, to show you how it functions. You know I've greased up these these lenses pretty bad. When you have the device turned on, uh, you're going to get some glow coming from these things, and so it's good. You know it's going to be observable from a, from a distance. You know compared to more traditional you know goggles because with the with the traditional goggle you know, all the lights coming back here onto your face or your eye. However, it's partially obstructed from the goggle itself. Whereas, I mean, there's nothing here obstructing it. So with the beam combiners uh, lit up, I mean, you definitely see a lot more glow. Now this particular goggle, uh, these are green phosphor. As far as I know, um, all of these 21s came with like pinnacle green phosphor, you know, filmed image tubes. And so what, one thing that they did to get around uh, the glow issue is that they gave, or they include these, these purple or I don't know, rose colored filters which these get put on top of the, uh, the, beam, uh, the beam combiner on the front. And so these are basically adhesive. You can peel them off and replace them. Um, however, as you can see it, you know, it significantly darkens the image up. You know, in most pictures that you see of 21s, you're gonna see them with these things on there. And so as you can see, I mean, with the, just the standard beam combiner, it definitely darkens up the image, you know, compared to, uh, to not having them there. Um, however, you can still look through them, especially with, with decent ambient light. Uh, you could definitely look through these things. However, uh, once you get these things on there, it's it's far too dark, especially at nighttime. So what I would do is is not put these things on there. Um, if you if you do buy one of these and you have these things on there, these do peel off. You just gotta you just gotta get in here and be careful you don't scratch the beam combiner. But then you just gotta peel them off. Although the 21 is a low profile in terms of you know the front to back spacing on it, it's uh, it's pretty big. So you know it's low profile in terms of front to back. However, it's not low profile in terms of size. And so here's the 21s in comparison to it. And, and as you can see, I mean, it's just a, it's quite a bit larger. You know, there's your, there's your side to side difference between it. And then for weight, you know, it's fairly, uh, it's fairly heavy, you know, compared to traditional binos like these things. And so to give you an idea, you know, here's the 21 on the scale. And you know, let me put the single AA battery on it, you know, 26.3 ounces. To wrap up this video, um, let me give you my thoughts on the 21. I think this is a very interesting goggle. I think it's more orientated towards the night vision collector than it is for like a first time uh, dual tube person. So if you're somebody and you're just looking for a dual tube night vision goggle, you know, go with the traditional night vision goggle. You're gonna get bigger eyepieces. It's gonna have more functionality, better selection amounts, um, you know, more guaranteed compatibility with every helmet out there compared to the 21, which is, you know, quite a bit more niche, requires its own mount and everything else. Uh, just keep in mind, this was designed to take advantage of the EHUD, you know, for heads up display into the beam combiners. And that just doesn't, you know, translate or cross over to civilian usage. 
And so my opinion, if you're a collector and you think this thing's cool, for sure. If you're a new buyer looking for a dual tube system, stick with the traditional bino. And so I hope you guys enjoyed the video and thanks for watching.